This episode of Cape Ann Today is brought to you by The Building Center, setting the standard for quality and service since 1903. Back once again with Erica Brown of The Cricket, talking all things Manchester and Essex. How you doing, Erica? Hey, guys, we're all together now. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So much nicer. Yeah, the grand reunion. So. The grand <laughs> <laughs> All right, so right off the top, Erica, there is a lot of confusion regarding all the public forums happening in Manchester. I know, we have like public forum overload. You know how I like to say we have like 12 pounds of something in an eight pound bag, but we have 12 <laughs> pounds of public participation in forums in an eight pound bag. Yeah. And it's confusing people, and I think it's confusing people because it is confusing. It's confusing unless you follow it really closely. Um, so the next th public forum that's up is going to be this MBTA um, overlay district, and that's not the name of it, but it's it's the 40A law that uh, is part of the housing choice law that was passed um, last year, last January, so over a year ago. Um, so there's a state law requirement. Part of the requirement of this law is that um, every town that is an MBTA or MBTA adjacent uh, community um, and there are over 300 of them, um, have to have a public forum before the end of April, I believe it is. Um, they have to actually have that on the books. They have to certify that they've had their public forum. Manchester's is going to be March 22nd, and that's a Tuesday at 630. And then a week later on March 28th, we have another public forum from the planning board on the limited commercial district changes that are going to be voted in for town meeting, which happens in April, in late April. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of confusion because on the, they're both involved zoning, right? Um, but really, there are two different things. <laughs> the 40A is the MBTA um, law, and I think all the communities are having them, including Essex are, is going to have it uh, because they're adjacent. But we've talked about this before, Rockport and Gloucester. I think you told me that Gloucester had... Uh, you know, Heather, did you mention that Gloucester had its public forum already? Well, I just know that the planning board presented the issues with the MBTA, the issues for the MBTA overlay to the city council. Got and it. It was a public meeting. I don't know that there, there was not public participation. Oh, okay. So maybe that's yet to come. Yeah. Um, I will tell you this, Gloucester, I think just from my uneducated eye, I think they're going to have a little more things to kind of navigate through because their MBA taste station is, I don't think within a half a mile, because it's, I think of it as over by the Azorian and the Mac and the downtown a bulk of density for living and commercial is Main Street and, you know, the whole area. And I'm wondering if that's a half a mile or not. But for Manchester, it's much easier. Manchester's general district, which already allows a very high degree of density, mm -hmm. um, is already within a half a mile of the district. It doesn't mean that it's a perfect match for this half mile radius that's being now required of communities that have the benefit of, in our Commonwealth, of um, an MBTA commuter rail station. Um, but uh, it's very close. It's really close. I, I think that Manchester has an easier lift for to engage this 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 law, um, and there's plenty of time. So uh, we're going to have a, the first public forum. But I promise that's the first public forum of many, many, many. If I had to guess, because this law has to be. We have to make a decision and have it a, v, a vote at town meeting each one of these communities by the end of 2024. Right. So, so Eric, but yeah, what I don't understand is that this, there's a lot of talk that the state has not yet firmed up their requests of these municipalities. So that's not even etched in stone. They're still trying to work out kinks. I think they're trying to, I think that's correct that they're trying to work out kinks. I don't know if the ask is sort of the, the wrinkle um, as much as the clarity on the law is the wrinkle. And I'll tell you, tell you and this is how Sue Brown, uh, our town planner, explained it. It was a really good, it helped me a lot. <laughs> she said, it's kind of like speeding. A, speeding is against the law. Excessive speeding is against the law. So there's a law that says you have to have this district of higher density housing to accom accommodate our housing challenges for our state. Right. Um, this is one of the efforts and you have to have it, uh, you have to comply with this and you have to actually establish this district by the end of 2024, just like it's against the law to speed. 
And the ramifications for not doing so are that you have to, you don't get these goodies, you don't get access to these grants. And she predicts that the state will escalate those those kind of punishments. Instead of saying you don't get these goodies, you also might see a little bit of a, you know, you might see the stick as well as the carrot. <laughs> but um, but right now it's really a carrot oriented thing. So you don't get these goodies. But with speeding, and so people are saying, well, doesn't that mean we don't need to actually have the district? What if we don't have the district, right? Um, and so in any case, sorry, my phone just went off. <laughs> but in any case, so people are saying, well, maybe it's not a requirement then. Maybe it's not. And that's where the clarity is a problem, as opposed to what is the um, what's the requirement in terms of density. They're pretty general and they're pretty good. I think that about saying, you know, we have this uh, 50 acre district. It's got to be within a half a mile of the um, the uh, your MBTA station. And there's a certain density that has to be achieved overall. It doesn't mean for 100 percent of the district, it has to have the same density. But it does mean that um, with the entire district, you need to accommodate a certain level of density. So maybe that's what you're talking about, about the clarity. I see the clarity much more fundamentally, which is people are trying to say, well, if it's if it's uh, if there's a punishment for not doing it, that doesn't that mean that you don't have to do it right. That's that's pretty much the logic that they're kind of going towards. And Sue Brown is saying, yeah, well, if there's a requirement to not speed and you get you know, and you speed and you get to have to pay a fine for speeding, I guess your strategy could be that um, you can speed and just pay your fine, you know, all the time. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. There yeah. are people who say, well, but does that mean it's not a law? See? So anyway. Sir, can we help you? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're on camera. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Right. Are you going to cut that out? <laughs> no, I like that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, just, so Erica, is there a date actually for this, the June town meeting, the special town meeting? Yeah, there is June 11th at 1 p.m. It's a oh, Saturday. Okay. And then the regular town meeting is April 25th, which is a Monday at 7 p.m. Um, and then I'll just mention those two forums again, just so that people know. Mm -hmm. The actual, you know, MBTA 40A uh, public forum, which is the requirement before May, is going to take place on March 22nd, which is Tuesday at 6.30. I'm reading this so I get it right, by the way. Yeah. And then the following week on Monday, March 28th at 7 p.m. is the planning board's public forum on the LCD changes. And that's really about changes to accommodate cell signaling who um, to, to establish sort of the um, enable them to um, follow through on their purchase of 40 acres of land to build a lab and biotech uh, campus there. So that's really what that's about. Nice. There you go. Yeah. And in other zoning, news, Erica, zoning. Yeah, there's a great story emerging with uh, the boys basketball team. Yes. And I have to tell you, I am not a sports fan. And, and J Jason Brisboy, who is our sports writer, is is like a longtime sports editor. So he's like amazing. But I want to make sure I get it right. OK, so the boys basketball team is a really phenomenal story. And this week is really a big deal for them because two weeks ago they they played, they entered into the MIA Division Four state tournament, right? Mm -hmm. The last week, and they, they beat Whittier Tech two weeks ago. Well, last week they beat, I gotta make sure that I get this right. Last week they had a total dramatic win against Wakona Regional High School, which is in Dalton, Mass, right? Mm -hmm. and, and with this win, they're now in what's called the- Elite Eight. The Elite Eight, that's yeah. right, the Elite Eight. Yeah. <laughs> so they're in the Elite Eight, and that's that is a big deal. I don't want to joke around. It is a big deal, but really what got them there, that game was extraordinarily dramatic because it was kind of this tie-tie. First of all, they were the underdogs. They were not expected to win at all. Um, it was tied 44 to 44, and, and I have to almost read this because an A.J. Palazzola, who's a senior, and he's, you know, a star, he actually – drove in a, a hoop and then uh, got, he was fouled. And so therefore he got his free throw. And with those three points, it kind of started to change it all, which was really dramatic and fantastic. But then all the other teams, like, you know, team players, Brennan Twombly, who's a really, you know, he had 19 points, I believe. He was the high scorer for that game. I mean, he, and he also had some unbelievable amount of rebounds, like 15 rebounds in one game. Mm -hmm. So he was a real star, but you know, you have Cade first. He's like, this is a gelled team. Cade first, 
Brennan Twombly, Patrick Cronin. I don't want to leave anybody else. And then, of course, Vaughn O'Leary. Um, those guys are sort of this heart of this incredible team that's been playing together for a really long time. And they just um, they're now going into the um, the Elite Eight. And oh, my God, I have to forget. I have to correct something. They're facing Wakana this week. Sorry. In the Elite there Eight. There we go. They're facing them. I'm sorry. They didn't beat them. The dramatic game was was a different game. I'm sorry. That was with the yeah. I told you. Who oh, was the dramatic fine. game with? It was, I believe, with Whittier Tech. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was a really fantastic uh, game. No. Oh, my God. Okay. Here we go. Sorry. Cathedral High School is oh, the dramatic game. There you oh. go. And Whittier Tech was two weeks ago. So I was correct there. It was just that they're now going to face Wakana and the Cathedral was their big. Okay. There you yeah. have it. So the news that's fit the print. Wakana, we're coming Hire after me you. as your next sports editor. Okay, there you go. <laughs> the fun stuff as always. There was a lot to unpack today. We're glad we clarified some of that public foreign confusion. So thanks again, Erica. Can I say we one will... more thing? Yeah. Can I say one more thing? Everybody should go to an incredible Manchester Historical Museum uh, presentation this coming Wednesday oh. at the Sacred Heart Church. Um, those lectures are back. They're incredibly popular. It's going to be about the Booth family. And they have an incredible speaker who is who is scheduled. Who's that? Who's that? Is, uh, is it the good looking guy? He's a really good looking guy, the ginger. <laughs> I don't think I know that guy. I I know so that. that's it. What, what time is that, Corey? Is it, in I all believe it's at 6 p.m. Wednesday 6 night. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. So that yeah. should be a good one. And it's, it's, I think it's going to be fantastic. And perhaps a special there. guest. We've heard, we, we're just throwing <laughs> it out there. There may yes, be a special right. guest coming there in for that event. Special. So, yeah, we're working to see if we can broadcast live that night through 1623. We're working on all that, all the logistics right now, but it'll be fun to revisit that piece. And I'm sure it'll be um, a cool Q&A session and a lot of uh, nice banter. And uh, it's an amazing story. So it'd be nice to retell it a little bit. I agree. We I like agree. the fact that the Booth family is getting rebranded as nice people, right? <laughs> Let's not go that far. Go. I don't know. I got I got two words to say to you. Guntown, Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there may be. Yeah, there's all kinds of rumors flying right now. So we'll see. But yeah, looking forward to that on Wednesday night. Uh, in the meantime, Erica, you have a great week and we will touch you on the other side of the weekend. All right. Bye, guys. Good to see you. Bye. Interested in a sponsorship? Email sponsor at 1623studios.org to learn more.